everyone and welcome. I'm Marcy Best, current independent demonstrator with Stamping Up and I'm from Clovis, California. Thanks for joining me this evening. We have a card that we're going to be creating with a new product and so I'm really excited to share it with you. And yes, somebody did, I think it was Terry Bates, um, I think, was the one that guessed it correctly when I asked what do you think I'll be creating with. And the Enduring Beauty, I absolutely love it. So here is the card we're going to be creating. And I have a couple of tips and tricks um, for this project. So I'll share those with you. Thank you so much for the thumbs up, everybody. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Carol, Gloria, Trina, Tracy. Tracy from Canada, welcome. And Eileen and Holly, welcome. Um, so I have a couple announcements. We're going to get to that really quick. I also have an item that I think will be very helpful um, with this type of um, product to use. And so I'm going to share that with you too. So let me first say that I still have my December Christmas class available. I still have a few kits left. So if you are interested, please let me know. Once you register there, if you scroll down, you can pay right there on that same page and then I will get that out for you as soon as possible. I'm usually, somebody just paid today and it's ready uh, to go in the mail tomorrow already. So that will be going out to you. December bingo for Wednesday is canceled. So we will be uh, having bingo in January. So everybody that registered in December you will go to be already included in the January bingo unless I hear differently from you. If you would like a refund, that's perfectly fine. Just let me know. The Be Mine class is coming up and I did post a sneak peek on my business stamping page. I forgot to add it here. But if you go to Marcy Bessaker Designs on Facebook, you will see a sneak peek of the projects there. And last but not least, the paper share is $45. You will get 96 sheets. That's from the main catalog. And then you will get 30 free sheets from the celebration catalog. Um, and now I'm 12, 12, 24, 48. Mm, I think that might be wrong, the 30. You'll get an eighth of a pack of sheets from every one of those. So um, everything in the celebration, you will get an eighth of a pack. Money-wise, that just works out with how much it is for the full uh, set of papers from the main catalog, and then you are able to buy two $50 celebration items, but I'm gonna do four and give an eighth. That way, it kind of works out, because I want you to share, you know, get all of the paper to try, and then the last pack I, will be a gift from me. So you'll get an eighth of the fifth pack also. Uh, let's see, Marion, hello, how are you? Hi, Marsha. Hi, Diana. Oh, good. Hi, Megan, Stephanie, welcome. I was working on my today. Got the first eight done with the envelopes. Oh, good. I'm glad. I hope you're enjoying it, Marianne. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Kathy. Ooh, cold in Minnesota. I just turned my heat down because it was getting kind of warm in here, but I turned it up during the day because I was chilly. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Barb. Hi, Margie. Um, I got your message, Margie. I'll read it after the video. I didn't get to see it. I just saw that you sent it. Um, so last night we went to my husband's work party and that was a lot of fun. It was a masquerade ball was the theme. If you remember last year was uh, prom night was the theme. And so um, it was a lot of fun. We got to dress up and um, I didn't post a picture on here, but it's on my Facebook page. On my Well, it's on both, my personal and my business, if you haven't seen them. It was a lot of fun. Uh, is it an eighth or a quarter? So, Barb, the main catalog um, packages will all be a quarter of a pack. But the celebration items... So, what happens is it's like $108 for the celebration items. Or for the main catalog for for all the packages to be divided by four people. So it's $108. That means a $100 order gives you two celebration items. So I did two $50 celebration items. I'm gonna get the paper, of course. But instead of giving you a quarter of only two packages, I'm gonna give you an eighth of four of the packages. So four different prints. 
And then there's five papers in the celebration catalog. So the fifth one will be a gift from me. So you'll get to um, experience and play with all of the paper in the celebration. But out of the main catalog, you're going to get a quarter of a pack of each, like normal. Uh, oh, you look fabulous. Oh, thanks, you guys. It was so much fun. My husband's so funny because he's just, you know, he's so numbers guy, not the big social guy. Um, and so he told everybody, oh, yeah, Marcy wanted to just kind of go casual. And I said, oh, no, we're going masquerade ball. We're going all out. Um, I had glitter in my hair. You can tell in one of the pictures. It's not glitter, but it's that spray um, glitter or whatever. Um, so I had it on up here and I had, I sprayed a little in my hair. So I was very sparkly. And he said, I told her, go all out, go get the, the fake jewelry and the sparkles and everything. So not my husband. I'm the one that's like, no, you're going to be wearing, um, tails. Uh, oh, no problem, Barb. Good. You got it. Uh, hi, Patricia. How are you? Hi, Carol. Um, so anyway, it, it was a fun night. We had a really good time and, um, it was a lot of fun. He stepped on my dress a lot, but thank goodness he didn't rip it. I kept thinking I'm walking off and he was stepping on it, but it was fine. We had a good time. He's like, I guess we should find out what the theme is next year. <laughs> All right, we're going to get busy. Um, I did some of this stuff ahead of time, so, like the embossing of the label. So um, I will skip the embossing part because you guys kind of know how to emboss, right? So here's the card. I love this gold paper. This paper came from the Nature's Sweetness. So it's this packed paper. And let's see. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I kind of cut it down. I took um, four inches off and just kind of decided what I wanted. So I chose this to be the back paper because I wanted the gold. And then I chose this for the print. And you can't see it really well, but it's there. And in person, you can see, you know, the different textures and, and print. Because this is a pretty good size image. But I wanted to kind of add a little bit more in there. I did a bow here, and then I just put this in the back there. So I will grab that now before I forget. So we have this, and we have this. All right. I just had a team meeting, so I was kind of like trying to get rush and get things ready. The other thing I used here is the distressed um, gold right here. So I used that. That is in the background. And then of course I took a strip for the inside of the full paper. So what I did is I decided to change it up a little bit. And when I was looking through these papers that I cut, I decided this one, because it's got the gold but it has the white, so it kind of ties in. And I decided to do the back paper with that and then do a smaller paper here. And I think I wrote the sizes down on my pieces. So let's double check. If not, I will remeasure it for you, but I'm pretty sure I did. All right, so let's get busy with our piece. I'm going to do a large piece here. So this one is five by eight and a half because I want to start out with a larger piece of paper when I do my... Um, my coloring. Oops, I need all my leaves. All right, so what I did, the colors I'm using on the leaves are Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. So right here, Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. So we're going to use that on the leaves. Those are my standard go-to colors, um, unless I'm doing something a lot different. All right, so what we're going to do is let's put this aside. I wanted to show you some different things with the sentiment, so we'll put that over there. All right, so on the inside, here we go. So I did four by five and a quarter because honestly, when you cut DSP, if you do it by four, then you get six pieces, right? So you're doing four and then by five, but by six, and then you can take a strip off and you can have it for another card. So I like to do it by four if possible. So this one, I decided we're going to make this one the main one. It's four, and that's why I added the distressed the gold in the back because that one as you can see is one that I cut up and have a ton of different pieces in here so I use it a lot for a lot of different shapes and sizes so 
Um, but this, I'll probably keep it more for the larger sizes. So let's go ahead and do the inside first. And then this one, I did three and a half by three and three quarters. So I went down uh, three quarters of an inch on this side. And then I just went in a half on the other one. Because really, we want enough for writing, but I just really wanted to see that other, that print. So we're going to do and go ahead and glue those on. Yeah, today I was able to I do a Zoom video with the team, and that was fun. I have some new people, so I was kind of introducing them and chatting about the upcoming catalog and celebration. Everybody is so excited about it. I know I am. And the glass mat. The only downfall for me is it leaves a big glare from the light and I don't want to put a paper on top of it and it slide all over. So trust me, I use it a lot um, off screen. Right now it's sitting behind me. I put the corners back on so that it doesn't get messed up when I move it back and forth. All right, so here we go. Now that's the inside. So it gives you a lot of some shimmery gold and Oh, the color, I'm sorry, this is Pebble Path. I love this new Pebble Path color. So Pebble Path. And then this, because this has Pebble Path in it. So what I like to do is read the back of your paper and just kind of see what color. So this is Pebble Path, Pecan Pie, and Gold. So I think we're good. We've got Pebble Path and Gold. And what I did here is, of course, my normal layering four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I did four by five and a quarter. All right, so we'll put those there. And then what I did is I get the same measurement going side to side, but I did two inches because what we're gonna do is, and you can't really tell, but that's okay um, because it's kind of behind a big image. But I'm just gonna, remember, rip it towards you so you have that kind of raw edge showing. If you do it the other way, you're not going to see it. Now, I did it close to the edge. You could really make it, you know, wavy if you wanted to. But like I said, it's behind a pretty big image. So I want my piece to be fairly big also. So, but you could, you know, bring it in more and make it a lot bigger. So I'm just going to add that. It just adds a little bit. Now, I'm not going to glue this yet because you want to add your flowers on there and kind of get an idea of where you want to put this, okay? So I'll show you that in a minute. We'll set that aside. The sentiments, um, I tried some different ones, and I'll show you on here. So I did the pebbled path first, and you could do that if you wanted to really pop that image up of your sentiment. Uh, put a sticky note in that spot. Put a sticky note in that spot. What are you talking about, Diana? I just looked up. I might be a little behind here. Um, so you could put that up, and it really pops the sentiment. Then I did it. I did the flowers in black, so you could just do a black sentiment and tie it in. I did black first because that's what I did here, and then I decided to try the Pebble Path. But then I thought, you know what? I really love the gold with that, so I decided to do that. I wish we could buy just the white plastic piece. Oh, I know. You know, Jabra, I, I do have a, oh, the glare. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Um, maybe we'll try that next. So, oh, you know what? Hold on a second. Oh, I had to scroll my screen up because I'm like, why am I only seeing like the bottom part right here? And it's because my YouTube was rolled up. Sorry about that. I, so I decided to do the pebbled path and the gold because it just ties in with this. And I just love the gold on there. So that's what I decided to do. So um, I did do all of them so you, I can kind of show you. Now on this, the first thing I did is I did the mossy meadow because I thought, well, there's a lot of old olive on here, so I'm gonna do Mossy Meadow. 
problem is, is the pebbled path is pretty dark. So if you put this on here, it would be pretty dark. Although on the camera, it looks really good because it's, this looks closer to that. But in person, this looks pretty dark. Hmm. You know what? Maybe we'll use the dark and see because now that I'm looking on camera, the dark looks pretty good. You might see it a little bit better. Well, we'll take a vote. We'll do the dark. Let's do the dark this time and see. We're going to use different colors anyway for the flower, so let's try. All right, let me move those over. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get started with our image. Now, the trick that I found is I have a large one of these. Uh, the Make Art Station, and um, Sharon, if you're online, we chatted earlier today, and I'm laughing because you have you pulled that out, and here it is, I have it. Um, so I like to do the blank side instead of all the lines. I'm going to leave my magnet on here. So if you have a magnet board of some kind, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this larger piece of paper. All right, we're going to put that here. I'm going to line it right across the top, and I'm going to go ahead and add my ruler there just to kind of hold it in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring, and I just put them right behind my die so I have everything right here. Could you use the strip torn for the inside of the card? Margie, you could if I would have cut, if I would have done it bigger. Because this is so tiny, let me try and pull it out here. It's so tiny. I mean, you could, let's see. You could add this on the bottom. It's going to be longer, of course, because I made this one shorter. So you could just add that on the bottom. I would recommend making it instead of maybe two inches, do two and a half so that you can get a little decent size here to, to cut and put there. But yeah, you definitely could do that. Hi, Deborah. Welcome. Hi, Debbie. All right. So we're going to lay this down. And then remember that your notch is going to be on your left-hand side. And it has a number one. Okay. So we're going to start with number one. And we're going to put this on here. I'm going to put it just like that. It doesn't have to be straight as long as you can put your notch on there. I used my pen last time, which is why you can see a pen mark on my mask. But I'll use a pencil this time. All right, because this is going to give you some extra paper anyway. So I went across and down. This is like one of those Wonder Woman, but it's a w, it's a V, not a W. So you're just going to line that up. Oh, we need a stamp first, you guys. Hello. I totally spaced on that. That would be very helpful. All right, I used my um, Stamparatus. And I'm going to ink this up, but I'm going to kind of look at this so I can kind of see where I'm going to stamp. So I'm going to stamp the little flower, the hanging flower goes to the bottom. Okay. This is new, Deborah. Yes. All right. So this is going to go about like that. All right. So I'm going to go right about, right about to here. So I'm going to put just a little pencil mark so I can kind of know where, about where I'm at. All right, so now let's ink this up. So that might change, and we'll fix that in a minute. So I like to rub it on first, and just to make sure it gets everywhere. And then I'm just going to really ink it up. Mainly the black in the center, I'm going to make sure those are nice and crisp and dark. And then everything else should be okay. Again, that goes downward, your flower. And I'm going to go right about there okay so I just like this way better than the big thick blocks my hands when I have to hold those big blocks it just hurts my hands so I decided the Stamparatus panel here is works perfectly make sure you get a good image because of course you can't redo it and assure that it's going to be okay all right so there we go there is our piece now, I'm going to remove my little pencil mark. Even though we're die cutting, I want that out of the way. All right, now let's take stencil number one and see where we're at. 
stencil number one, you want to line up your flowers. Okay, so this is going to be wrong. Obviously, I should have stamped first. All right, so I want to make sure that this is up now on my panel really good. Okay, we're going to take this. And just go around and make sure that it's all the way around the flowers and it doesn't have to be exactly on it because you know when you use your um, blending tool it's going to be it's not going to go you know up and over and around your whole stencil so I just kind of make sure it's as close as it can be on all the sides now remember it could be perfect here but it could be off up here so just kind of Move it around until you get it to just about where you think is good. It's so funny because I keep looking and looking and I just want to make sure it's as close as possible. All right, so I think that is pretty good. So now I'm going to take these metal, metal, magnet guys and just I'm going to make sure that they're on here. All right, now this up here, I'm gonna mark, and it just kind of helps you with your next um, image. Now, I used bubble bath on this one, but we're gonna try a different color just for fun to see what it's like. The mask yan are so fun. All right, so I'm gonna move these kind of out of my way because I'm gonna be coloring. You just wanna make sure that they are on the board and holding this down. We're gonna try sweet sorbet. And so I'm going to have to, I'm going to start a new small one here because my, my large ones are pink and red. This is kind of in between and I really like this color. But the other thing you can do, in fact, if you get a paper towel because it's got that rough roughage on it, take, this is my red and see, it's really not that bad. I mean, it barely has red on it. So I think I am going to switch to the, to this. I can, I can use this one. Now look how much came off. Not a whole lot, but I like doing that on the paper towels because it takes off that excess ink that if you feel like there's a lot, and I'm kind of pushing hard. I want to make sure that I'm using rich sorbet and that's what it is. The other thing I want to do is bring in my beautiful new mat so I can put my ink pad on see if it was on this it would be sliding everywhere oh you guys probably can't see it let me move it over there we go all right so we're going to do that and i'm going to start off to the side okay so i don't want it super dark because this is our background of our flowers but it is a much darker color so it's going to color way faster than the bubble bath so i'm just oh gosh that is pretty so this is rich sorbet, okay? So that is level one. So then what I do is I bring in my silicone mat. We're gonna take this one off. All It's nice and colored evenly everywhere. And then I take this over here. I take a baby wipe. Oh, that one's not wet. I take a baby wipe and I just wipe it down. Now, if you had a glass mat, you can definitely do it on there. But if you're working on it, you might want to take it off to the side. Okay, so there is number one. And so then I just face it down. Now we're going to go to number two. I like how they switch to the leaves now because that gives this enough time to kind of set while you're going to the next one. Where did you purchase your 12 by 12 paper sleeves? Um, Pat... If you look down below, there's a link for Stampin' Storage. I am an affiliate there. But make sure you get the pockets, not the sleeves. Um, the pockets are like this. I like them way better than Amazon because they're clear, where Amazon is frosty. And I like them because you get a much longer label, so I can make my font larger. I also like them um, pockets versus sleeves. The sleeves has... This opened over here too. So opened here and opened here. Um, I just didn't like that. I thought I would, 
but I ended up, my papers weren't as protected as well. Uh, when I put them in my shelf, I put them in like this and then the flap just hangs down. Um, a lot of reasons I just didn't like that. So these are the best I have found and I have purchased a lot of different ones in my days. But um, I really like these because they're clear, larger label. Um, they work perfect. So that is where I get them. All right, so we are gonna go to this one and we're gonna go to Old Olive, the lightest color. All right, so Old Olive. And then if you wanted to, you can take your, um, your brush and just get that color off that you just used. We're gonna come back in and use it, but um, you could just get take it off before you even put it away and that's helpful too. All right, so we're gonna take this one which is our green, and I just used this, so Mossy Meadow was the last color I used, so I'm just gonna kind of get that off. Again, I love to use a paper towel versus anything else. Hi, Susan. All right, so we're gonna line this up. So if you line up your left corner and line it up here, it should be really close because that's where the last one was lined up. So just kind of, that's a good starting spot. And there we go. So again, I'm gonna put my magnets on. And now we're gonna use Old Olive. Jeanne, that is going out tomorrow. I apologize. I just saw your message. Um, okay, so start off and then come on. Now remember, right now, the only thing that you're coloring is the leaves. And you want to do it light, but not super light. You're coming in with a darker color. I move my magnet over. So having the magnets really does help. Otherwise, you're going to be like this, trying to hold everything flat and down. You don't want your paper to move. I mean, it still can move. This is slippery, and the magnets are going through, you know, the plastic and the paper, but it's so helpful. And there's also some sticky sheets and different things out there that would work also. All right, so I just like to make sure that my green is everywhere and you don't have like some really light white spots somewhere. So I just like to make sure that my leaves are dark. Now I'll be honest, these right here Look like they're supposed to be flowers. I would, if I were to just be coloring this and I didn't have um, um, stencils or masks, I would think those were flowers. But they must have them as leaves, or maybe it's the green around the flower, and then it's gonna, you know, come into a flower. Um, so because the stencil says so, that's what I'm doing, and I'll show you the other card in a minute so you can kind of see what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna. Wipe off the green here. All right, that is stencil. Um, the magnet thing is called Make Art. Now this is just a small one. I have a, they have a large one too. Um, so it's just called Make Art by Wendy Vecchi, and it's called a station. So it were, and then this one has um, some different magnets and some different, like a ruler. And this is a palette I get, I'm thinking for, you know, to use like paint and watercolor and stuff on. And then this is a corner positioner. So you can get your paper to fit just right, which would probably work with the stencils too. Instead of doing this, you would just put them up in that corner. But in case that magnet moved, I'd rather know that it's gonna to go on here. All right, so we're gonna take this one, let's see. So where did you get the magnet board? Um, ooh, I've had it for a while. Um, I actually believe I was out of town and I saw this at a craft store and I bought it. But I'm sure it's on online. Okay, so there's that one. We're gonna go to stencil number three, which we're going back to the flowers again. So we're going back to our sweet sorbet. All right, so let's put this up in the corner, get an idea. Now this one's a little harder to tell where it goes. You're gonna kind of see some edges. It doesn't necessarily go all the way to the edge. 
you just want to not see white around your flowers okay because it's going to shade spaces in and outside of your flowers so you're going to move this just right and you're going to be able to tell as long as you don't have white on the outside you're pretty much okay all right so i just covered up all the white and see, it's actually really, really close to that right there. Oops, there's a little tiny white right here. I don't want to go outside my flower. So there we go. All right. Now we're going to go with our sweet sorbet again. All right. And now you're going to take this. And you're going to go over. Now, this is going to be darker, but you don't want to go super dark. But it's definitely going to be darker. It's color on color. I thought about doing different colors. Um, and I think if you did like a yellow and an orange or something like that would be pretty. But I wouldn't go too far into different colors. Maybe two different purples. You know. Um, something like that would be okay. And I'm just going to go a little darker down here because I went pretty dark up there. And you don't have to go super dark, but I don't want one flower super dark and the rest not since I went kind of dark up there. And it's whatever's on your brush. And what I like about these stencils, remember the last ones were really delicate. And so some of the little tips would pull up and stuff. This does not. Um, so far, I've not had any issues with that. All right, are you ready? Okay, I'm going to darken this one up a little bit. The top one's really dark. All right. And each layer is just so fun, and this is so relaxing. Look at that. Let me pull this up. Hold on. Look how pretty that is. Now, see how dark that one? I think I'm going to do those a little darker. So we're going to go back down. I'm kind of liking that darker. You want to make sure that they're on your panel here and not falling off the edge there. So now I'm going back in and I'm just going to line it up with where my color, my darker color is at. Because that's what I want to make a little darker. And I know my head keeps getting in the way. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm going to go make sure that this is a little darker. And so now I'm just going to come straight across and then over here. Okay. And I think that's enough. Make them a little darker. Oh, how pretty. All right. This one's bigger. It had a lot of ink on it, so I'm just going to get the back side. All right, that's number three. And now we're going to come back for number four, which is now going to be Mossy Meadow. Debbie, you got this, but you didn't get the stencils with it. It should have come together, so make sure you call them tomorrow. All right, so now I'm going to use the same one because we used Old Olive first, which is a lighter color, and now I'm going to go with the darker color. Um, so I'm just going to get some Mossy Meadow. Oh, let's put our stencil down first. All right, so I'm going to right up here with the corner again and kind of lining it up. Now you'll notice, see these stems right here? All these little stems, they're going to show up with the darker. All right, so let's go back up here, kind of give you a starting point. And then mainly at this point, what I'm looking at is the stems. I want to make sure I don't have any white around the outside. Like there's white right there at the top. And that all the stems show up. So that is good right there. 
And now what we're going to be doing is the veins and the stems. And because I went kind of a little more bold on the flowers, I'm going to go a little more bold on the leaves also. And I'm using darker colors for the flowers, so this will look really good. Notice I'm always kind of pushing up at the top because I don't like to hold it back here. I'm afraid it'll snap. I've never had one snap, but I've always kind of had my hand up towards the top. Okay, so these are pretty dark up here, so I'm going to darken these up a little down here. All right, I think that is good. So here we go. Look how pretty that is. Look how simple that was. So simple. Now I'm going to wipe off our stencil because I'm going to put them all away clean. But see, even these leaves, none of those little corners pop up or anything. They're really, really nice. All right, so now I just kind of dry them off. This one I think still has a little pink on it, so let me just wipe that off real quick there you go all right so those will all sit over there now there is one more stencil which is the fifth one and this one is if you what you can do is you can cut this out and just stamp it or you can cut different flowers out if you wanted to put this on there I don't feel the need to add more darkness to this flower or shadowing or anything because if you look I think it's got plenty of shadowing and I just don't think it needs more of this but you could if if you felt the need to add more on there you you can but I like it like this so I decided this was good enough for me so I didn't want to do this one but see how it's doing the shading like inside the flower there and then up by the petals, like the back petals have that shading from, from the front petals. And then underneath where the, the sun's probably shining this way, and then this is underneath. So it just gives it all just a little bit of, of shading there. So let me show you. The difference. I'm gonna add this back so I don't lose it those up there all right so now we need to use our dye now on the label this is the one I used and then the leaves I used these leaves now you could add more flowers um, or buds or whatever you want those to be leaves or flowers you could add more if you wanted um, but I just added the leaves and we're going to do those in mossy meadow this time I think with this being darker it's going to work out really well um, just remember always that I say that this bud, if I don't know if it's a leaf or a flower bud, but they're saying it's a leaf, um, is, is pointed downward is the correct way to put it. So we're just going to add that here. And I have some tape I've already used. And we'll cut this out. But how simple was that? And I'm telling you, with that magnet uh, plate, it just really makes it easier. And here we go. Look how beautiful that is. And that looks like you did a lot of watercoloring on that, doesn't it? Oh, good, Megan. I think you're going to love it. Too bad it was to wait. Okay, my heart thing is right in the middle of what you're saying. Too bad it was to wait until again in February. 
Well, when it scrolls up, I'll be able to read it. Sorry, Megan. It's like Stampin' Up, or Stampin' Up. Uh, YouTube put that little heart thing right where people write. I don't think I can move it. All right, so. Uh, let's put that up there. And now you still have this to do your sentiment um, or your extra flowers, your leaves if you wanted to. You could do them out of white. And then you've already got a lot of ink on here. I mean, you could take your green and just go on there and color it and then do your leaves and, you know, whatever you want out of your scrap piece. But I've done that for us already. So let's bring that back in. So again, I was deciding which sentiment to use. Um, this is Pebble Path. Okay, here's our two differences on our flowers. So here's our pebble path, if we wanted it to match the card base. Here's our black, because I did this in, in black. But I decided to tie this paper in and do it with the pebble path color. So we'll use that. And I just go, I just embossed it. All right, now what we're gonna do is bring this over And we are going to put our image. Oh, I really like this color. Oh. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's in your way too, yeah. All right, so here we go. Um, think about how you want it. So see on this one, I slanted it to the left a little bit, like that. It just looks a little more symmetrical um, and I wanted to see the background if I were to do, to do this you would still see it but I kind of just decided to go like that so I'm going to put what I did is I went and I just put it like this and so I said okay whatever that right it looks like it says right but it's I-G-H-T whatever that is I'm going to put this right underneath that so that's how I figured that out I'm just going to add my adhesive on there but now you're going to pull this out and line it up. And I'm going to go right under that word there. And I just want to make sure that it goes somewhat. It's straight over here um, about where the, the line is over there. So it should be pretty straight. All right. And you're probably not going to even be able to tell much once you put your all your goodies on here. The next thing I did is I'm going to take my... Um, my gold trim and I'm going to take some adhesive. Now what I did is I took this and I said, okay, how big is this? Where is it going to go? And I said, okay, so I'm going to go like this and just add some adhesive and see, make sure it's going to be covered up and it will. And then I took this and I just kind of, I did gold side up. And I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to do it. And if you want more, you can. But you're going to also have your dimensionals from your, your object there that you're going to do. And then I'm just going to turn it. And I'm going to come back. Oh, I don't like to go too much off the paper. You're going to have the gold and the card. So you have a little, a little room on the edges. And then I'm just going to go back here. I like three loops to show. So I'm gonna come back, oops, I want gold to show, so I gotta turn this this way. And I'm gonna go like this. And this is okay if it's not all the way down because we'll fix that. And so this is my third loop, but I'm gonna come down because I want my little tail in. I have one up here, and then I want one to come at the bottom. So we're gonna come back like this. And then I'm going to come back like, like you're not going to see that one. And then I'm going to have that one come down. And we can fix it once we put all of our, our flowers on. So we're just going to cut that. All right, so now, and you can put as little or as much as you want of that. I like to see three loops, and I want to see this right here. So we're going to have to move, put another little piece right there. Okay, and then we can trim those up. All right. 
and you can always do a little less if you're doing a bunch of cards and you don't want to waste that much trim um, you can always make it a lot less than what I did all right let's where is oh here it is oh yes you do Debbie this is a must-have for sure I love this and like I said I wanted to try a different color and see what it looked like and I just think the darker one is just of course I love this color anyway but look how pretty I like it this one's way darker I mean you could do them much darker if you want um, it's whatever you choose all right we're gonna go ahead and add this on let me throw my dimensionals over here to the side um, okay we're gonna just do it right about like so okay so everything should be down all right now I see a little bit of adhesive right there you can just take your pokey tool or your your eraser adhesive eraser or whatever and push that in and it's fine all right now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and adhere it and I probably could have adhered it first because now it's bumpy but that's okay we'll put that on here I appreciate you guys giving me a thumbs up it does help my channel a lot I really appreciate it thank you so much all right so now let's put it on our gold and now obviously if you need to die cut this out use it for something else you sure can um, hi Carol no worries you can watch the replay all right we're gonna just get that little bit of gold around the outside I love this distressed gold it just adds so much look at that just by adding that little bit even though you have a lot of gold on here you could also put some rich sorbet let's see what that looks like I put the gold on there already but let's see if I have a piece here where is my paper do I have any in my drawer a berry oh sweet sorbet no all right hold on I want to see what it looks like because it's tucked behind my catalogs that I need to put away all right look how pretty this would look Ooh, maybe we add another piece oh yeah okay I think we should all right so we're gonna go because I've already put the gold on we're gonna make this um, all right so what I always do is start out at five and a half because just in case I need a card base I have one and that's done so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do four and a quarter actually by five and a half anyway because uh, because that's already four and an eighth so we can't really go I don't want to go like a sliver more because then you won't see it but I love the look of that look at this how pretty it is now I could switch ooh even better to make it not so thick oh I already put the card base darn it I put the inside I would have changed this to the color but that's okay we're just gonna put it right on the front of the card so let's go ahead and add this on there it'll be a little heavier so what I would do if you wanted to add the color is um, just change your card base because you're still gonna have your two layers here and then your card base All right so let's just add that pop of color since it's such a nice vibrant flower color make sure you get that on there all right Ooh, so pretty all right we are not done yet we've got some stuff to do still but we can put this all together because we're not tying a bow around the outside let me get that adhesive off all right now let's go ahead the buds are down they're right here and it's going to cover your front so I'm just lightly putting it on there just to make sure 
but it is on there. Now look how pretty that looks with that rich sorbet on there. It does add a lot, I agree. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we have to add some linen thread, of course, because this just looks like a linen thread kind of card. So we have gold and we're gonna do linen. And I like to do kind of a loopy bow. See how curly that is? Take your, if you can find it, <laughs> take your bone folder. I have to pull another one out and straighten it out. It's just easier to work with. And then I'm just gonna do a three loop, kind of big. You see how far my fingers are apart. And we're going to make a bow. All right, so here is our bow. It's nice and loopy. Yes, it is sweet sorbet is the color. Remember when you're doing your first layer, you want to do it kind of light, but get a good coverage. And then you can always come in darker with whatever color you're using. All right, we're gonna just tuck this in here. And I'm going under. You can always fan it out. You can fan it out under your image right here and on top, whatever you want. We're just gonna add that. And then I tend to go a little shorter. I don't really like it hanging off too much. All right, so there's that. Let's do our sentiment. So we're gonna move the gold up just a little bit. And we know these are flowers and these are leaves, right? We know what it looks like, so it's okay. I don't like to cover up a full flower. Um, so I wouldn't do that, but going in the middle of them, I think is fine. So I'm gonna add a dimensional on here. And then I'm gonna add some adhesive right here because this is gonna lay flat. This is already raised. I'm gonna pull that up. And I like to just kind of see how far you can go to where you want it. Make sure that this is, make sure you take your, <laughs> your sticky thing off so it sticks. And I want white to show, so I'm going to go up a little bit. I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so there we go. So there's that. All right, so there's that. Now, for embellishments, um, oh, we gotta put our leaves. Let's not forget our leaves. We need our glue. All right, so here's a big opening. So I'm gonna put the larger, let me make sure this is, let me make sure this is working. Even though the needle comes right out of that, sometimes it just does not like to work. Okay, so make sure you're putting it on the right side. And I just go up the main vein. This one has a lot of glue right there, so I'm just gonna. All right, so I'm gonna put this one up here. And I'm just gonna put it right about there. it's just a matter I just kind of oops oh look at that it went right down the center could not have planned that better and I'm just going to tuck this because I have some white right here so it just kind of shows it a little bit better so just pick and choose your spots Right there, I think, and then I think I'm gonna put this one kind of coming up right here. And you can put it under or over the gold, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a base of it stuck to the down below, I think I'm just gonna put it like that. Now for embellishments, I was kind of thinking, all right, what embellishments do I want? And you'll be surprised, I think, 
The embellishments that I loved with this are these here, the iridescent foil gems. And this is from the Kid, Kit, Just Kitten um, kit. But if you look, I don't know if you can tell, see the pink? It's pink and gold. That's the most color in it. I, there's, there's a little bit of green if you just turn it just right. But I thought these would be perfect for this. So, because it's pink and gold, right? So what I did is I did a larger one up here. Now the other thing I do is, see how this one doesn't have quite as much in it? If I'm doing a project that I, you know, it doesn't, let's say this one didn't have a lot of pink, but I wanted the gold, then I would use that one. This one has a lot of pink in it, so I do want to use. I'm gonna put another larger one down here. So now this is my focal. And then I'm gonna put a smaller one right here because this is right here, my focal. So this is kind of my triangle. So you like, I like to put them on a triangle most of the time because it just kind of, you know, focuses on that. Even though this one's hidden down here, it's still there. And if definitely if you give it to somebody as a card maker, they're going to notice and say, ooh, look at that. So there you go. Isn't that pretty? Thanks, Deborah. So that is your card for the day. Here's the one I did before. So this one is Bubble Bath and this one is Rich Sorbet. So which one do you guys like the best? Which color do you like? I want to try next, I think I'm going to try Calypso Coral. Because I love oranges and um, oranges and yellows. I used to love Mango Melody, so now i got to come up with something else. So I really like the idea of using those two colors to see how it comes out. I might do like um, maybe the Lolly Lemon. I got Lolly Lemon, Lemon Lolly. I always get those mixed up. Lemon Lolly. And then with a little bit of Calypso Coral or even maybe Flirty Flamingo. Oh, I'm glad you guys like it. Yeah, I think with the bubble bath, it would have been fun if I would have done the pink a little darker on that second level, just to kind of see it pop. It does look Victorian. You are right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I hope that you learned a little bit on how to use the mask and some helpful tips for that. Um, I think this would be so pretty in a lot of different colors. Uh, if we went with like a brighter green, like maybe um, the granny apple green and even tried like a pretty peacock flower or lost lagoon, um, I think would be really fun to try. Um, and I'm gonna try some purple, some more real purples too, I think would be really fun. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your week. Don't forget um, that Wednesday there is no bingo. Um, I should have a video, a regular video for you on Wednesday. Um, don't forget I have the paper share available. If you are interested in giving the paper share a try, um, you will get individual packages, individually labeled. They'll have your number on them and the titles on them so you know exactly what you want to order. Um, after you, you know, get your paper and give it a try. And then also I have a Be Mine class coming up in, in January. And on my Facebook page, Marcy Bessaker Designs, you can see some sneak peeks there. I will move the sneak peeks over into my um, program here for Wednesday to show you. Oh, Carol, happy birthday. I'm reading a lot of rich sorbet. I agree. I kind of like the bold, the bold color of that. And I really like the, the adding the color on the background. I think that would have been really pretty on this one too, is to add just that little bit of color and bring it in. All right, everybody have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye.